Hi everybody, welcome to Potty Talk, the only talk show where we have to hide in the bathroom to get away from our kids. But my guest today can't even hide in the bathroom <laughs> because she cannot escape her three tiny little children in the bathroom. Mom, mom, where are you? I am so excited to have Megan King Edmonds from the Real Housewives of Orange County here with me today, hiding not in her bathroom, but in her car. That's right. The car is the new quarantine bathroom for single mothers of three toddlers. This is my new, what, sanctuary throne? This is where I sit on my throne in my car, not in my bathroom anymore. They still find me and, they, and I can hear them. So here I am, escaped, hiding in my car. <laughs> I love it so much and I totally relate like my kids are a little older so I can escape from them in my bathroom hopefully usually but when your kids are three two and two that's right yep they have the best names Aspen Hayes and Hart I love them thanks that's so sweet they're all Hayes and Hart are family names Aspen was because I was looking at aspen trees. I was in Idaho when I was pregnant and I named her from the as looking at aspen trees every day. You know it's my favorite tree? Really? It's such a beautiful tree. And so... by the way, it's so relevant right now because it's in all of the Frozen movies. It's like the tree. And so Aspen is loving that. She's like, there's an aspen tree. It's so cute. Oh, that's so cute. I love it. So you recently went through a divorce. You currently, are currently, yeah, brutal. Not, I'm so sorry. The ink is not dry. Oh, th thank you. I appreciate it. But um, you know what? Out of the storm comes a rainbow, and I am in that rainbow right now. So don't be too sorry. And how is single motherhood going? I was raised by a single mom, and I bow down to single moms like superheroes. Really, truly. Oh well, thank you. Um, I totally agree. You know what? I have. I'm so lucky to have a live-in nanny, and um, she helps me so much. It's, a, it's almost, in a way, like having, I don't know, it's just another adult to help in the house. I travel a lot because I live between LA and St. Louis, and so it's really necessary to have a live-in because I need help when we travel on the plane, and then I can't hire somebody full-time in St. Louis and in LA because I never know where, when I'm gonna be, where, where I'm gonna be. And so because of that, it's been, um, it's been great, but I've always had a live-in nanny. So now it's like, cause I work, I work full time. And now I had a husband and a live-in nanny and now it's just me and they all only want mom anyways. So it's really been a challenge to kind of not only balance my work with, with my social life and dating and a, the divorce and my expanding my brand and my presence, but also with allowing my children to adjust to their new normal and giving them the grace and patience that they need in order to make the adjustment that comes with their dad not being in the home with us every day. So it's been yeah. a struggle. And, but I think that, um, you know, everything is what you make of it. And I'm trying to make it into the best, but there's good days and bad days, let's be honest. Well, something I love about you, I mean, you're, you're drop dead gorgeous and you're so fabulous and awesome. But what I absolutely love about you is that you have a brilliant sense of humor and you really do make like lemonade out of lemons. And I'm kind of obsessed with your TikTok um, because I love how funny and relatable and real and like willing to make fun of yourself you are. Yeah, you know what? I actually just just uh, pitched a book, and in the book I say how um, comedians they get their humor. Humor is basically the funniest, I guess, when um, when trauma, like when you combine tra trauma trauma with time, because then you can laugh about it later, right? So I have that, except like so trauma time, so trauma in perspective, essentially. So, so what I'm trying to do is just like bypass the whole time component and just still be funny anyway. And it's been really cathartic to kind of find the humor in so much that that um, it's a challenge to do, but 
by doing it, it's been almost like therapeutic. Yeah, when you talk about, you know, making sure that your kids are resilient through this process and divorce, like I feel like you are setting such a good example for them by making fun of it and finding the humor and finding the light side in the darkness. Thank you. I, you know, I, I try. We all do our best. And it doesn't mean that we're going to be the best every day, all day. But um, my mom sent me a quote last night and it, she knows that this quarantine has been really hard on me. And as a mother, as a single mother, even with my health, actually my nanny just took five days off. So um, never letting that happen again. Um, but my mom sent me this quote and said, um, if you're having a hard day with kids, then at night when you're you know, kissing them, saying your prayers, whatever your routine is, to say to your, your child, today was a hard day. I wasn't happy with how um, I reacted to some things. I, I was a little bit disappointed in your behavior, you know, whatever's applicable. But tomorrow's a new day and we're going to start over and we're going to try harder. Good night. I love you. And I was like, okay, like that just makes it feel okay that what we're going through can be reconciled. It's not, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to define you. I love that. And yeah, I've learned with my kids, like the power of saying, I'm sorry, because I'm not perfect. I screw up all the time and I'm a bit of a, a yeller. And to be able to come back and be like, you know what? I screwed up. I'm sorry. And, and I think that, you know, they need to know that we're human beings too. I think it's so powerful in any situation to show that you screwed up and like to show that the humility and the vulnerability that comes with apologizing and to, be, to say to your children, I think it's so powerful because you are putting yourself back on their level. And that's the thing that we all want as humans, right? It's to be seen and felt and heard. And so to do that to your little tiny people, they're people with, with, with thoughts and, and feelings too. And just to say that and bring them down to your level, you're just going to, I think that you're just going to strengthen that love and bond and respect by, and by also setting a really freaking good example. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so on Potty Talk, I ask everyone the same seven questions. So I'm gonna ask you the questions and see what your answers are. You ready? Ready. Okay, what do you miss most about your pre-kids life? Which actually wasn't that long ago for you. Sleeping in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know what? You can get a babysitter and you can stay out at night. And you can, but you can't sleep in. Not unless you have a babysitter in the morning, which I have done before. But it doesn't matter because you're still at home and you can hear their screams. And you can't, like, I, as a mother, I, I can't sleep through that. It doesn't matter how loud my no noise, my sound machine is. It's like, just like that intuitive scream. It's like echoes in your brain constantly. So sleeping is for sure. Yeah, well, you can, like, hear them breathe from down the hall. So the screaming is like, forget about it. I mean, the mother's intuition is so strong. You're like, oh, they're not breathing. And they're like, 500 miles away, maybe, maybe they're five feet away, but you know, you just know, you just know what's going on with your kids. So, um, yeah, sleep in would be really nice. Not, and not even, I don't even need to like really sleep in. Like, I don't want to do like a noon sleeper in or, you know, like a college sleeper in or kind of thing. I just want to sleep in to like 8 a.m. <laughs> Really late sleep in, like 7.30. Lost eagles. I love it. Okay, what is the worst piece of parenting advice you ever received? Ooh, okay. Um, okay, I know. This is, this is what... It was when... My, so I have a son who has a brain injury. And I knew from the second he was born something was off. I just knew it. And, but I couldn't place it. I'm not a doctor. I'm just a mom, right? And so all these doctors said, honey, you're wrong. He's fine. He's just, stop comparing your children. And I'm like, but I'm not. Like, I'm not comparing my children. So something's wrong with him. So I think that um, all of the doctors gave me terrible advice because they were wrong and I was right. I had a similar experience, but um, not with a brain injury. My daughter had failure to thrive. And all the doctors kept telling me just, you know, nothing's wrong. You're just not feeding her well. They were blaming me. And it turns out she was allergic to milk and she was in severe pain. 
Um, I think moms, our intuition, we know when something's up with our kid. I, I totally, I couldn't agree more. As long as you're not in denial, which is a really strong emotion as well, and there's nothing wrong with with denial. It for I've seen so many mothers go through brain injury diagnoses with their children uh, because of my story and just having shared my story. And there's nothing wrong with denial or, or like looking back and saying, well, I should have seen this or that. I think that it's important to give ourselves um, a little bit of grace in dealing with such a difficult thing. But at the same time, if you don't have the denial, you know, you know. Yeah, for sure. And I love that. Yeah, I think it's so important to cut ourselves some slack with everything in motherhood because it's freaking hard huh. yeah why didn't anybody tell me that <laughs> i mean they did but i didn't believe them everybody makes it look so easy yeah they're lying <laughs> they're all lying <laughs> those instagram moms out there liars well that's why i love your tiktok because you're telling the truth <laughs> i don't know how not to tell the truth when i start scrolling on instagram and i see all these perfect moms with their like perfectly dressed kids I'm like well they have more kids than me and my kids don't look that good or like what am I doing wrong and then I'm like no 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 stop brainwashing yourself like get out of this zone it's unhealthy and so that's probably why I just am real on Instagram because I don't know what not real is supposed to look like because I don't I don't go there I love it okay speaking of real what is the meanest thing your kid has ever said or done to you? The other day I said, whose girl are you? And Aspen said, daddy. <gasps> oh, bad timing, girl. Bad timing. I know, right? I was like, never mind. We'll just talk about it later. My kids are, they're not old enough to be mean. <laughs> <laughs> they're only three, the three, she's not even three and a half yet. So she's lucky she can even talk. What was your biggest parenting mistake? Having three kids within 18 months. That was a big, that was a big, whoopsies. Um, that honestly, because I did IVF, like that was really, really too much. I don't recommend it unless like your circumstances make, make it so it has to be that way, I guess. I don't know why it would. But um, yeah, that was really hard. But parenting mistake outside of planning when my children were born, I feel like sometimes I let them do cool stuff, like jump on the couch, because I think it looks fun. Like I'm living vicariously through them. And then I'm like, oh man, you know, now I gotta clean my couch. There's like dirt all over the couch or like chocolate fingers all over the couch. So I don't know, I guess, I don't know if that's a mistake, but it's kind of one of those like risk first reward type of things. And because I, I like find my inner child so much. I'm like, that's cool. Yeah, jump on the white couch. That's a great idea after you eat chocolate. Yeah, I'm always struggling with like, whether to like let them have fun, but you know, like the massive mess that's gonna come from that. And, or whether to be like, no fun. <laughs> because yeah. can't handle the mess. But then also speaking of food, like chocolate or whatever, sometimes I'm like, should I be them more organic? Like, so I'm, sometimes I run in and out of the grocery store and I, I'm just like getting the first thing I see. I'm not looking for organic. I'm like, ooh, should I be doing that? I don't know. You there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I had the uh, script on a plunger and it just fell. <laughs> oh, you did? Oh my gosh. Do you have to use a plunger often? No, but we have one in here and I realized it makes an amazing script holder. Wait, how is that an amazing script holder? There's like a tiny like it's just a, a stick. Here. <laughs> and then I can put it on top with a chip clip. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. That's like a prop. I feel like you bought that just for your podcast. I swear I didn't even. It's just, it just is a natural disaster over here. Well, wait a minute. Have you used that plunger? I know that's what everyone's asking. I'm, I'm hoping not. But I'm not the only person in this house. <laughs> Live on the edge. Living life on the edge. I, I'm here for it. Living dangerously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, describe parenting in one word. Unpredictable. That's perfect. Okay, so what is your proudest parenting moment? I would probably say, 
okay, this is actually a very proud parenting moment. Um, for my, I'm very big on being inclusive and not um, trying to talk about people based on anything but what's on the inside. Not talk about race or sexual orientation or um, socioeconomic status. And as far as like seeing gay parents, like that is very normal for her to see two daddies. That's not a thing that even registers to Aspen or my other kid, my, my twin boys as well. I mean, you have to be proud right now doing this by yourself in the middle of a pandemic with three tiny, I mean, your kids are tiny, tiny, tiny of, of proudest parenting moments. I mean, you're in it. Yeah, I'm in it. I am in it. The, I remember when Aspen was, was um, almost two. The twins are 22 months, almost 23 months. And I remember thinking, oh my God, when I have two this age, are you kidding? I can't believe this. How am I going to deal with this? Well, now not only do I have two that age, I have two in quarantine that age. Ooh. It is, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. And um, yeah, I think some people are doing okay with the quarantine and they're like finding themselves and loving the extra time with themselves and loving the extra time with their kids. If their kids are like at a fun age that, you know, somewhat independent. But like my daughter, the three-year-old, she misses preschool. My twins go to the park multiple times a day. Those are closed. We go to the beach every day. It's closed. It's just been so, so hard for me. And I mean, I just, I just think about the other single moms in my position. I'm so lucky that I have a career that has, that's able to provide me income so that I'm not having to worry about paying for my groceries and things like that. And I just, to think about it too much, I, I want to cry when I think about people who are worried about paying you know, rent next month and everything. So th I appreciate that, but I feel I struggle to take a lot of credit for it because I'm, I could be in a lot worse position. Yes. Yes. It, it, I can't imagine being a single mom in a pandemic struggling, trying to put food on the table right now. It's, it cannot be easy. No, it makes me want to cry. It's horrible. Okay, what is your best piece of parenting advice? I would say to let, this is gonna sound so hippie, but kind of to let your child tell you how to raise them. Basically, I'm saying all kids are different and um, we all know that. And I'm not trying to be a big hippie dippy, but like, for instance, one of my twins is totally ready to start potty training. And so I've taken off his diaper and, you know, like pee on the floor or whatever. That's not a big deal. The other one, the other twin is not like he feels really uncomfortable without a diaper on and he cries because I look down he he doesn't even want to walk because he's like I want my diaper on so that's kind of what I mean about like letting your children tell you how to raise them I'm not trying to put them in any kind of box to say you know by age two and a half you're going to be potty trained or whatever it is um and I'm not faulting myself as a parent and I'm not faulting them as a child I'm just kind of like trying to go with the flow yeah, and I love it because each kid is so individual and even twins, right, are yeah. so individual and we have to parent them for them, not for as we would parent some other kid. Right. I mean, uh, I was with my first, I was so regimented, which is great. I love a routine. Routines are super important for every person, baby, adult, whatever. But um, I was like, okay, at age one, she's going to stop the bottle, cold turkey. And she did. But like that works for me, but that doesn't work for everybody else. And that's okay too. I love it. Well, I want to thank you so much for hiding in your mobile bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I hope it's not a bathroom, but it's a mobile sanctuary. A mobile sanctuary. We'll um, take what we can get at this point. Yeah, exactly. This is like emergency quarantine time. <laughs> All rules are out the door. Well, this was right. so awesome. I just, I just adore you. I'm having so much fun obsessing over your Instagram and TikTok. Tell everyone where they can find you on the internet. You can find me on Instagram at Megan K. Edmonds. You can find me on my podcast, Intimate Knowledge, which is about sex and intimacy. And you can find me on my website, MeganKEdmonds.com. Love it. And on the TikTok. 
Oh yeah, and on the TikTok. That's right. I am having way too much fun with the, with those. <laughs> They're really ridiculous. If anybody wants to watch them, like just feel free to leave a comment about how absurd they are because they are. But that's why I love them. I love them. I am obsessed. Do you? Do you? I just posted one today with um, Aspen. With Aspen, you gotta watch it. It's a SpongeBob one. Oh, fun! I will definitely watch it. I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. Yay! Bye. All right. Bye. Talk to you later.